Good morning, everyone. It is just before five o'clock in the morning on September 5th, 2019. And it's September and I haven't had my first sip of coffee yet. So I'm going to do it right now. Oh, yeah. Extra strong. Just to get the day started. All right, so today's test is between the iFi Black Label and the Cord Mojo. We are testing the treble response. And so far, our tests have been consistent to the following degrees. One, both seem to have very, very similar sound characteristics. Both are warm. Both have rolled off highs. Both have a slight bit boost in, in the bass but the mojo seems to have a greater emphasis on the bass than the iFi if you do an A and B comparison. The differences are so far the iFi tends to have a little bit more air in the presentation just naturally speaking and with the 3D switch turned on that air is increased just a smidge just a teeny tiny bit it's a it's a finesse switch as I said yesterday whereas the Mojo has no such capability. Other than that, these two have basically the same sound stage. They have uh, very similar tonalities, as I said. And overall, they will give you basically the same presentation of the music, the same warm, intimate character to the music with the very tiny variances that I've already discussed. So let's now discuss the treble. We have three songs we're going to test. Scherzo for X-Wings by uh, John Williams, A Thousand Years by The Piano Guys, and New Light by Kazuki. At the bottom of the playlist or, or, the, or the video, you're going to see a playhead. And at that playhead, you're going to have the time markers where you can jump back and forth depending on what you want to listen to. Use that. Hopefully, it is helpful. A is designating iFi. B is designating the mojo. So let's start off with Schurzo for X-Wings. And I have the iFi plugged in currently on my AB switch, and I am using the Allo Audio S4R headphones. There we go. The volume is currently at 10 o'clock. I'm going to increase it to about 11. No peakiness at all. Not a much air in the song at all. It's a very, I you could say it's intimate. I would say it's a fairly closed experience. It, it has no width, no depth to the song. It sounds particularly narrow sounding. In other words, it, it doesn't have a whole lot of sound stage. I'm going to increase the volume again to about noon. Yeah. It's it's like having blinders on. Horses have blinders on and they can only see a very tunnel vision. That's the way the sound is being presented. It's very tunnel vision. There's no width to the song. It's just between her ears. And there's no verticality to the song. The instrument separation isn't particularly great. It, it's okay. Meaning I could hear the various instruments, but I cannot hear multiple instruments individually in within a group. So you have a group of brass, you have a group of string, you have a group of horn. You, I can't hear like there are five horn instruments in that group or six horn instruments in the brass. It doesn't portray it in that way at all. What I can say is that there is no treble at all that well there is trouble but it's not peaky trouble there's no harshness to the song whatsoever okay so now let us go to the mojo and compare we're on the mojo switched and let's try this Mojo's is set at double orange volume. I'm going to increase that to, to double green, the first level of green, which is about what we had the iFi to. So 
so far presentation is basically the same sound stages is exactly the same no harshness no trouble no troubly harshness once again it's hard to hear the separate you uh, instruments in a group set I know there are multiple instruments I just can't tell you how many there are that's because it lacks air there's no verticality in the sound stage basically no depth What I could say is, is that these two sound basically alike on this song. I, I can't find any real differences here. The slight air that, that is typically present on the iFi it doesn't, it doesn't portray itself on this song. And the mojo seems to, you know, you could blind test me on this and I, and I wouldn't be able to tell which one is which. It, you know, that, that's... That's good, that's bad, depending on what you're looking for. If you want a distinct difference between the two, I don't think you're really going to get it. So testing it on an orchestral piece like Scherzo for X-Wings demonstrates that both of these have a very, very narrow soundstage, have a very closed-off ex experience, and that the separation of the individual instruments is not particularly good. In fact, it if you're looking for detail and separation in air neither of these is going to satisfy you uh, especially if you have a song that is mixed with a lot of instruments and there's supposed to be a tremendous amount of treble energy which this song does have then you're going to lose out on a lot of that treble energy because both of these roll it off fairly early in the frequency range so that it never gets peaky, it never gets harsh, it never gets in your face. Okay, so now let's go to A Thousand e Years by the Piano Guys, and we're going to switch back to the iFi. And here we go. Volume is staying between, I think it's 11 o'clock No harshness, no peakiness. I hear the, I think it's this is a cello or a violin. It's got this very soothing quality to it. The piano is playing very softly in the background. No interference with the frequencies. But once again, the soundstage is fairly narrow. It's it's like listening to it on your bookshelf speakers in your bedroom. Now with just the piano playing, no peakiness, no harshness. Incredibly gentle to the ears. When the piano and there's, I think there's a guitar in here somewhere, and the string instrument, when they're all playing, they're playing fairly softly, all three of those things. And I don't hear any interference amongst those various frequencies. I don't think the piano gets muddy. I don't hear that. And I also don't hear the piano getting harsh. It's a very smooth, relaxing presentation. Okay. So now let's switch to the Mojo. And I, and I suspect the Mojo is going to have a very similar presentation. Okay, and let's go. Volume is still at double green.
piano sounds exactly the same to me between the two. String instrument sounds exactly the same. Except maybe there's a slight, just a tiny bit emphasis on that string instrument. The reverberation seems to be a little bit more emphasized. But it's it's a very minor difference that I think you'll only be able to tell doing an A-B test. No harshness, no peakiness. The treble is very, very well controlled. In fact, I would say the treble is basically the same as it as it was on the iFi. The sound stage is the same, narrow. No depth, no verticality. And, and this song also lacks air. I mean, in, in the way it's being presented. We've heard this song on, on other instruments and other players like the THX, Portable, and also the Cobalt. And they add a bit more air to the presentation so you get more separation amongst the instruments. And, and that gives the, uh, the impression of more soundstage. Whereas both of the iPhone and the Mojo, they, they don't have a whole lot of air. They don't present air. That's not what they're doing. Even though the iFi has more air presentation than the Mojo, overall, it's not a huge difference between the two. And frankly, if you're just sitting back, relaxing, and listening, you will not be able to tell the difference, I don't think. Okay, so let's stop and switch back to the iFi. And on the iFi, we're going to go to New Light by Kazuki. And New Light has a lot of layered details. And let's see if one or the other presents that detail differently. And if one or the other becomes harsh or grainy uh, when we increase the volume. I have the iFi currently turned on. And here we go. I hear the piano, I hear this the metallic tinging in the background that goes ta 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 I heard that at the very beginning of the song. I hear the kids in the background fairly clearly. I could hear the crunching of the, f of the grass underneath the person's feet as he's walking. I hear the wind rustling. I'm going to increase the volume to noon. No harshness, no graininess, but when I increase the volume, the the guitar frequency gets boosted a little bit. And there's a lingering reverberation. Doesn't it's not a big difference, but it's something that just jumps out at me. No graininess on the increase the volume again to one o'clock. And at one o'clock no harshness, no graininess, no peakiness, no treble or harshness at all. I'm going to bring it back down to about 11 o'clock. I'm going to turn on the ba the 3D boost. And on a song like this, a 3D boost is a noticeable difference. It thins it out a little bit, but it also adds a little bit more air. Yeah, and it all depends on whether or not you like that particular presentation. You may not. Oof. Good separation of instruments. Not the best I've ever heard. It's not an analytical player. Still a very closed-off experience, but no harshness at all. Okay, so now let us switch to the Mojo. Okay, we're now on the Mojo, and let's go. Volume is still a double green. I 
I can hear the, the person walking on the grass, but it's a, it's a little bit more muted than it was on the hi-fi. The kids are a little bit harder to hear in the background. The piano is slightly more boosted on the mojo than it was on the hi-fi. Ever so slightly. I'm going to increase the volume. Now we're at double teal. Now we're at double C blue. I feel like such an idiot talking about color as volume because this is a stupid idea. It's a stupid, it's a dumb idea. Now I'm on actual blue. And when, as, as I increase the volume, what I hear is a little bit of graininess as I increase the volume more and more. It's not a whole lot of graininess, just a tiny bit. I'm bringing it back down to double orange. What, that, what I mean by graininess is that some of it starts becoming a little bit harsh to the ears. It's not as soft and as smooth as it was on the iFi, and it's not as soft as it's and smooth as it is at the lower volumes, you know, between double orange and double green. And when past double green, as you're increasing the volume, the harshness starts creeping in. It's not treble harshness. It's not ear piercingness. It's not like that. It's simply graininess and, and roughness to the song signature. Now, that's something that you may like, you may not like. I don't know. But the iFi doesn't do it that way. And the Mojo does. Okay. So, let's stop. And let's talk about conclusions. So this was this was a fairly short comparison because look, in both of these have a very similar signature, as I've said multiple times. They both present the music basically the same. And the difference really comes down to I think two factors. Number one, do you want a slight bit more airiness in your music? And if the answer is yes, and the iFi is the one that will present that to you. And number two. Can you handle the tiny bit of harshness that the mojo provides that includes in the mix as you increase the volume? Now, that may be a sound signature. That may be something that people say, that's just part of the mojo's magic. Or you may say, that's a, a design flaw. And, you know, one man's treasure is another man's trash. And I can't say whether or not the mojo is doing something that was completely intended by the that it, by the designers or whether it's doing something because the designers simply didn't give two figs that it was not working right I, I don't know all I can say is that there is in fact a difference and I'm not the only one that has found it there if you go on to HeadFi and other forums and you search for the mojo user reviews about harshness and graininess, you, you will in fact find users who are who have complained, who have commented about the same stuff. Now, whether or not you like that is totally up to you. All I can say is that my experience between the two is it's really, really difficult to separate them. It is very difficult to say that, that this is the iFi and now this is the Mojo. If I were to close my eyes, I wouldn't be able to tell you the difference. I really wouldn't. And even even blind tested volume increasing I wouldn't really be able to tell the difference what the question will be ultimately is which one do you prefer for features and price now for the price the mojo is 500 bucks I've heard now that it's down to 300 pounds in the UK because mojo apparently is not selling enough of these and if that's enough if that's enticing to you then so be it despite the fact that the mojo has many more flaws than it should versus the iFi which is you know at this point if it's 300 pounds it, the mojo is then it's double the cost the iFi is six hundred dollars MSRP and it's very rare to find the the black label under five hundred dollars because this thing is I don't know if, if it's a supply problem issue I don't know if people simply feel as if it, it should be sold at five to six hundred dollars and should never come down i don't know if people simply don't want to leave it for less than 500 i don't know 
but it's hard to find these things for less than $500. It does have many more features in the Mojo, hands down. More filters, um, better volume control, you know, no graininess when you increase the volume. And it just is seemingly a more robust item overall. Now, with respect to the treble specifically, I would say that the treble between these two is the same. I, I can't find a difference, honestly. They both roll off the treble fairly early. Now, they may roll it off at different points. Maybe one rolls it off at, I don't know, 10K. Another one rolls it off at 11K. I don't know. I, I, can't, I don't know. But it rolls it off, and it, it doesn't ever become high-pitched or peaky or, or, or ear piercy in either of these. So if that's your concern, which one is more smooth in the treble region, they're both pretty smooth. I, I don't. I don't think that's really the concern. The concern is all the other factors that we've talked about. I hope that this has been of some help. I hope that you have enjoyed the comparison between these two units. Ultimately, I hope that uh, you have found that these videos help you decide if you're choosing between the two, which one you would probably prefer. I'm currently on Patreon. And if you would like to donate to me once a month on Patreon, I would truly appreciate it. Donations on Patreon will help me keep this channel going. I have people asking me almost every day to review things I don't have. And if you know anything about my channel, it's that I don't get sponsored by anyone. And I spend my own money in order to buy products and then give them an honest review. So if you find this content entertaining, if you find it informative, then I would hope that you might consider donating to me on Patreon. And for those who are currently my patrons, I thank you so much for giving me your hard-earned money and helping support me and my channel. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. If you want me to review a product from my current product lineup, then please look at the product review form below in the description area. Please fill that out. I will get to it as soon as I can. And you can also check the status of your particular request once you go to the product review form itself. If you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, I will talk to you soon. Take care.